There are very few literary master, masterpieces that can transcend generations. There are even fewer that serve as a blueprint for the future. One of those books is 1984, one of the most prolific novels of our time. The author was born Eric Arthur Blair, but is probably most known by his pen name, George Orwell. And this week would have been his 110th birthday. George Orwell was one of the greatest visionaries of the 20th century, who identified himself as a democratic socialist. Under the Soviet Union, he was forced to flee under communism's suppression of socialist dissidents. In 1945, he wrote Animal Farm, a novel anthropomorphizing an animal kingdom meant to serve as a metaphor for Stalin's betrayal of the Russian Revolution. Soon after, Orwell wrote his most famous book of all time, 1984, which portrayed a terrifying future of a total surveillance and police state. Tragically, just one year after it published in 1947, Orwell died of tuberculosis at the unforgivably young age of 46. However, his work lived on, and his staunch opposition to injustice and authoritarianism led him to produce one of the most genius narratives ever written. Sadly, Orwell's dystopic future and vision in 1984 seems to ring more true every day in this technological age. Let me just say that if you have not read this book, you must, not just because it's a work of art from front to back, but because it is so eerily realistic. In fact, it was even made into a film in 1984. Take a look at the trailer. <laughs> Thought criminals who maintain that resistance is not real. Believe me, Winston, it's very real. Big brother from the age of the door police. So many of the ideas and concepts in this book are applicable to the way our society has evolved today. In fact, since the explosive revelations about the NSA spying on American citizens, sales of 1984 have skyrocketed. So what is it about this story that res resonates with so many? What kind of future does it depict? Well, imagine a world under complete totalitarianism. It's a world of perpetual war, surveillance, and mind control governed by a singular ideology. All independent thoughts and individualism apart from this reigning philosophy is considered to be a thought crime. It doesn't matter whether or not you vocalize your dissent. The mere act of thinking it is enough. No need to write it down or even say it out loud because the second it crosses your mind, it's only a matter of time before the thought police come after you. And once they do, you'll simply disappear with every record of your existence wiped out and vaporized. At the helm of this state oppression is an ambiguous entity called Big Brother. And every day it requires a ritualistic cult worship to the state. Orwell describes it as a hideous ecstasy of fear and vindictiveness, a desire to kill, to torture, to smash faces in with a sledgehammer, seem to flow through the whole group of people like an electric current. But aside from this tyrannical adulation of Big Brother, there's also a calculated manipulation of language designed for one reason, mind control. People are conditioned through repetition and propaganda, and all must abide by these three slogans. War is peace, freedom is strength, and ignorance is slavery. These terms are contradictory on purpose, which Orwell refers to as doublethink defined as, quote, the act of simultaneously accepting two mutually contradictory beliefs as correct. This paradox is also applied to the purpose of government ministries inside the state. Similarly to the Nazi propaganda ministry being called the Ministry of Public Enlightenment, in the book, the Ministry of the Truth controls all information. This is where historical revisionism takes place by rewriting articles, modifying photographs, all in agreement to the party line, because everything the party says must be true. Orwell refers to it as reality control. The majority of people living under the system are weak-minded, incapable of understanding anything more than the party's worldview. This willful ignorance is instrumental in the state's control over the peons. Then there's the perpetual war 
to fight an unseen enemy. In some cases, the government bombing itself to keep the masses living in fear. Orwell describes the concept, quote, the object of waging a war is always to be in a better position in which to wage another war. But constant war is also to ensure the destruction of humanity's potential. As Orwell explains, quote, the essential act of war is destruction, not necessarily of human lives, but of the products of human labor. War is a way of shattering to pieces materials which might otherwise be used to make the masses too comfortable and hence, in the long run, too intelligent. Guys, look around. For as long as I can remember, this country has been at war. Perpetual war against an invisible enemy. There are nationalistic rituals held to celebrate an authoritarian government, one that you can't question without being labeled anti-American or a traitor. The masses have a blind trust in authority and relinquish their privacy for so-called security. History is revised to favor the winners and taught to eager minds, shaping them into modern day proles. We're told that dropping bombs is the path to peace and occupation is the path to liberation. But this nightmarish prophecy was never intended to be an instruction manual. And it's up to you, me, and the freedom of our minds to prevent it.